There are moments in your life when you think to yourself, I made it big, I'm never going to beat this. So you see yourself telling about this glorious day to your children, grandchildren, and whoever made the mistake of telling you they haven't heard the story yet, and yes, they do have a bit of time to listen. My first pinnacle was a brief drive in the Lamborghini Gallardo LP574 Superleggera. Later I was more impressed by the Rolls-Royce Phantom Coupe, and then it was no longer about the power or luxury, but about the quality of the video I managed to produce. Today I'm behind the wheel of a Porsche Cayenne, again, but this is not a plebeian 550 horsepower turbo. This is a coupe which makes it less practical and a plug-in hybrid to make it faster. Can you hear anything? No, because I'm driving using only electric power at the moment. However, I can turn the knob, and knobs are always good, especially in cars. So I turn this knob and listen to this. Emissions is the word used today by just about everyone in the auto industry. If a car maker wants to avoid paying high fines, they need to curb emissions. There are several ways to go about it, like downsizing, turbocharging, electrification, or a combination of the above. In case of a 4-liter V8, it's hard to talk about downsizing, but there is a turbo, or two turbos actually. This is pretty much the same 550 horsepower engine like in the ordinary Cayenne Turbo, but Porsche added a plug-in hybrid system with a 136 horsepower electric motor and a 14.1 kWh battery. The total output is, wait for it, 680 horsepower and 900 Nm of torque. This behemoth comes at a hefty 2.5 tons, about 300 kilos more than the regular Cayenne Turbo. What are the benefits? All this power shaves a tenth of a second from the 0 to 100 km per hour time. It's 3.8 seconds now, which is still slower than the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, at least in a straight line. The time from 80 to 120 km per hour is down 3 tenths of a second to 2.4 seconds. Nobody claims Porsche is cheap, but 30 grand for a fraction of a second is hefty by any standard, especially when there is just as fast and impractical SUV coupe in the VW group, and it's called the Audi Q8 RS. Who needs a car that weighs more, it's only marginally quicker, and there is an extra EV hatchback in the price tag? Well, perhaps it's because the prospective buyer doesn't want to drive that EV hatchback. According to the spec sheet, the plug-in hybrid Cayenne should use less than 4 liters per 100 kilometers. That's 59 mpg US or 71 mpg Imperial. How is that even possible? The Cayenne e-Hybrid can drive up to 43 km in pure electric mode before switching to hybrid mode. Of course, the ridiculous efficiency can be achieved assuming you recharge the 14.1 kWh battery from an electric socket every chance you get. In real life, things may not be quite as rosy. With batteries fully charged, I went cruising around Warsaw. Traffic was very light, as I'm filming this during the coronavirus pandemic and people mostly work from home. Anyway, I did a loop, including a ring road and the city center. Twice I had to press the accelerator harder to merge, and this is when the petrol engine kicked in for a couple of minutes. In total, I got less than 30 kilometers in pure electric mode, so that's substantially less than the 43 claimed. The weather was good, it was about 20 degrees Celsius, no wind, this is as good as it gets. I suspect I could get a couple kilometers extra range if the car was preconditioned prior to unplugging it. Perhaps I could have turned off climate control altogether, but that's something you may do in an EV, 
to get to your destination without stopping to charge, not in everyday use scenario. By the way, it takes about six to seven hours to charge from a regular home socket or two and a half hours from a type two socket. Porsche is not big on showing you all the EV options. I bet you could see more information using the Porsche Connect app, but press cars usually don't have that configured. For example, it takes some fiddling before you see how much time is left to fully charge. Open the car and a number blinks on the instrument cluster for a couple of seconds and that's it. Then you would probably have to go around the main menu. Perhaps someone at Porsche decided there is no point wasting the owner's time with this type of information, because if they want to recharge, they will do this using the engine if they can find the right button in the menu. You can use the engine to charge the batteries. It happens automatically in Sport and Sport Plus mode or in Hybrid mode if you find the right menu. You can also select Hold Charge, for example, when you need to get to a zero emission zone and have some power left. In charge mode, you regain about five to six kilometers of range every 10 kilometers driven. You could use that on a motorway, for example. But even on the motorway, you can cruise with speeds of up to 135 kilometers per hour in pure electric mode. I managed to get about 20 kilometers on the motorway before discharging the battery. It's not the most efficient way to go about it, but it is possible. Fuel economy. If you want to drive the Porsche Cayenne Turbo SE Hybrid Coupe, yes, it's a very long name, like it's meant to be driven, uh, get ready for 20, 30 liters per 100 kilometers. That's like 10 US or 11 Imperial MPG. In Sport Plus mode, the Cayenne will gulp any amount of fuel and some electrons as well. But drive it normally in electric or hybrid mode and you can get less than 10 liters per 100 kilometers. That would be about 24 US, 28 Imperial MPG. Not bad for a 2.5 ton SUV with power similar to a 911 GT2 RS. I find it incredible how Porsche can make its cars, especially the larger ones like the Panamera, Macan or the Cayenne, so versatile. On the one hand, you're getting a relatively comfortable SUV, not a couch on wheels, obviously, but comfortable for what it is. On the other hand, press on the fan pedal harder and it transforms this family SUV into a bullet. And in a couple of seconds, you should report yourself to the air traffic control because you're flying low and fast. But acceleration is not everything. The Cayenne Turbo SE Hybrid has Porsche traction management, which distributes power between front and rear. Air suspension with three chambered dampers adapts to the driving style and road conditions. Porsche active suspension management controls the damping force. Porsche dynamic chassis control keeps the car level in the corners and Porsche torque vectoring plus makes sure you have grip on exit from corners. Add rear active steering and the Cayenne is going to feel agile like a much smaller car. Steering ratio with this optional system is 12.2 to 1. All these systems are combined into something which is called Porsche 4D chassis control and still at higher speeds on exit from corners the rear axle is very lively. I can't imagine what this car can do on a track. And then you have to stop the 2.5 tons from whatever speed you're doing. As standard, the Cayenne Turbo SE Hybrid gets ceramic composite brakes. It stops alright, but when you're doing it, you know you're changing the trajectory of the Earth. Which I shall demonstrate right now. Hold on to your horses! If you heard the planet shaking, that was me. Sorry. And off-roading, of course. Air suspension means you can adjust ground clearance from 162 to 245 millimeters. 
Porsche Cayenne has a dedicated off-road mode in which power is distributed between the axles to ensure good grip. Obviously, these are not off-road tires, but a Cayenne is likely to take you further than your average SUV. And by the way, I'm stopping in the middle of this exercise just to make things a bit more difficult, challenging for the all-wheel drive system. And in the Porsche, it doesn't make a difference. I mean, it's, it's like a tank, this thing. Something I really like in this particular test car is the checkered upholstery, reminiscent of the old 911s. The Cayenne Coupe cockpit is pretty much the same like in the regular Cayenne SUV. I like that the instrument cluster merges analog rev counter with digital displays on the sides, but those displays mimic the old 911 dials. That's something we first saw in the Panamera, and then in the Cayenne, and finally in the 992-911. There is a ton of settings and even a button to wash the backup camera. And I have to commend the designers for placing arrows indicating on which side is the filler and on which side is the charging port. There are good cup holders, small glove box and small storage under the armrest, mainly for your phone. Porsche adopted USB-C ports, so remember that and get appropriate cables. Handles on the center tunnel are especially good for the passenger who is holding to their dear life when the driver is in full attack mode. The door pockets are large. I would like at least one open cubby, but I understand Porsche wants to make the cockpit look sleek and clean. There is plenty of legroom and headroom in the back here. The coupe body shape doesn't seem to affect it that much. There is a wide tunnel running through the middle. Above it is a console with AC controls, two USB-C ports, a lighter and an ashtray. Porsche won't shame you for smoking. If you can afford a car like this, you can probably afford medical care as well. You can adjust the backrest tilt. The middle part with an armrest folds and you can transport longer items. As standard, there are only two seats, but upgrading to a three-seater bench is free. The boot has 500 liters volume, that's 145 liters less than in the SUV. Porsche doesn't spoil us with shopping bag hooks, there is one. There is also no place to store the parcel shelf. What I find hilarious is the charging cable bag, which is the size of a small suitcase, and there is a picture in the charging user manual how to secure the bag. I often complain about the lack of dedicated storage for charging cables in EVs and PHEVs. Cars like these are mass produced for 10 years and some of the top automotive engineering minds that Porsche employs couldn't think of anything better than a bag that takes up a quarter of the trunk space and you have to secure it with a couple of carabiners. Prices of the Porsche Cayenne Coupe start at 84,000 euro, about 7 grand more than for the regular SUV. There are two hybrids in the range, the E-Hybrid Coupe and the Turbo SE Hybrid Coupe. Prices of the latter start at 176,000 euro and with options this car costs about 210,000. To give you a taste, the Burmeister 3D high-end surround system itself costs €4,600 and on top of that you have to pay almost €500 Euro for the CD player and another almost €500 Euro for the digital radio. A couple of grand here, a couple of grand there and you end up with €35,000 in options. Porsche Cayenne Turbo SE Hybrid Coupe, very long name once again, is the epitome of excess. You can buy a cheaper version with a larger boot, skip the hybrid or buy the cheaper hybrid if you really want to pretend your SUV is eco-friendly. But cars like these are made for the customer who wants to show the world their middle finger because they can afford it and they're willing to pay for compromised cargo space and with 3.8 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour it's hardly a compromise anyway.
And how do you like the Porsche Cayenne Turbo SE Hybrid Coupe? Do you find performance hybrids more convincing than those efficient cars, you know, to roll around the city? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, subscribe and join me every Friday or just click one of the links on the screen right now. And also I started a new channel about the gear I use to film my shoestring budget car reviews. It's called Marek's Gear. Marek's Gear, Marek's Gear, gear to use filming, etc, etc. So click the link somewhere here or in the description below and subscribe that as well. And also don't forget to turn on notifications, stuff like that. See you next time.